All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought I would update you guys on the progress of the fig cuttings. How are they rooting? How have they been doing? Um, and then, you know, I also wanted to specifically talk about in this particular part of the series, right? Because we've been really doing a series of this particular topic. We have a whole playlist that is dedicated to rooting these fig cuttings. And we've been doing this now for years, um, showing you guys from the very first step which we actually talked about a couple weeks ago, which is getting the soil, the pots, the bins, the size of the pots, the dimensions of everything, kind of everything set up. And then all, also all the way at the end, when we actually move these cuttings outside into our outdoor environment sometime in the spring, transitioning them into adulthood, basically. And um, this particular video though of the series is gonna be about the water it's going to be about the lights. And these are probably the two most important things other than the parafilm and the soil. In part one of this year's pro progress so far, we talked about part one, which was essentially the soil. And then in part two was about the method. And we talked about the parafilm and how I'm wrapping each individual cutting with parafilm and why that is so paramount. It's so, so important to the success that people still, for whatever reason, don't listen to me, but it's amazing how many people reach out to me and say, oh, thanks for that little tip, Ross. I wasn't doing that before, and it increased my success by quite a bit. So I'm going to give you some tips here about the lights and about the water, the soil moisture in this particular part of the series. If you're interested, you want to see any other parts, you want to skip ahead, you want to go back, just go down to the playlist down in the description. I'll put that there, um, and you guys can see it for yourself. So the first thing I want to talk about is the water. It's the most obvious thing. We're trying to keep the moisture in these pots, guys, moist. So there's wet, there's moist, and then there's dry, right? So dry is obviously dry. Wet is if we just watered it, right? So we saturated the soil. Now, hopefully you guys have a well-draining soil. We talked about the soil, why that's so necessary. And then also something that doesn't hold too much water. We want the soil to dry out to an extent. So when we come in here and actually do wet the soil and saturate this, it's not soaking wet for an extended period of time. We want to keep things moist as often as possible. Now, a big little tip here, guys, to keep the moisture moist is actually to add mulch. And I have talked about this. I add a layer of mulch to the tops of my pots to regulate that soil moisture. It's really quite simple. It happens in nature. It's going to happen here in your pots. Mulch is incredibly powerful and important to, uh, to have there. Something that's quite, I would say, a little bit quite dense, you know. Um, these rice holes, I find, do a really good job. Something like wood chips, as an example, may not do nearly as good of a job because they're usually larger pieces and there's a lot more air that can get in there, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not going to keep the soil as, as moist or as regulated as you might think. So assuming, you know, it's time to water because this is my most common question. Well, Ross, how, you know, when do I water? How often do you water? How, what are the exact amounts of water that you use in your pots? I don't have that information. I'm sorry to tell you guys. I have a green thumb and you guys need to get a green thumb. If you don't have a green thumb, you're gonna fail at this. So you need to make sure this, you know, this could be broken down to a science in a sense. You're right in that. But you really should just learn how to do this based off of, really, the finger test. Stick your finger in the soil, pull it out, and see what you get. How moist is that? Move it around a little bit. Well, I would argue that the first inch of soil here, maybe about down to here, is really quite dry. Anything below that is actually quite moist. And maybe even down here at the bottom of the pot, it's actually wet. So there's your little conundrum is that if we stuck the cutting in the pot, remember how each cutting has a different length, but what we really try to do because of these pots are four by nine inches, we try to put the cutting in here as deep as possible, leave a little bit of room here on the bottom, but we wanted to make sure essentially that enough of the roots, enough of the um, nodes were below the soil so that we could have roots at each individual node. So if our cutting is all the way down to, let's say here, let's say we draw a line and the cuttings, the bottoms of the cutting are all the way down to here, that means this portion here 
is moist or wet. Could be wet, I don't know. I haven't really been able to check all the way down here, right? My finger can only go down so, so far. So this particular portion here might be dry, but this might be moist, this might be wet. So anything down here in the wet is not good. And this is gonna encourage the rot. This is gonna encourage all kinds of problems with your cutting. You're not gonna get to the root. And that's what you're really gonna struggle with. So it's not just enough essentially to put your finger down in here. It's what conclusions you can draw by putting your finger in the soil, right? So essentially these guys are probably, I would argue, they're totally fine. And you can really tell by how good they're doing you know, this, this particular cutting has got really nice leaves on it, putting out leaves. Um, a lot of the, the cuttings in this particular bin, let's say the ones that have rooted out or leafed out, I should say, are doing quite well. So for me, that's a good sign that the moisture's right and also that the light is right. So that's really key. Um, and yeah, just I would just argue, really just try to avoid something that's wet or something that's dry. Now, if it's dry, like some of these guys can be, is that whatever, whatever that, portion, that portion of the cutting is in the dry soil, so let's say this, this top inch right here, this is potentially drying out, which is really like the reason why I like to, uh, when I wrap the cuttings in parafilm, I like to go another inch below where I've stuck the cutting in the soil. So some of these, like you can see, if I move some of the soil away, it's still wrapped in parafilm. So it's not like this is an issue where the cutting is, is drying out or it's rotting. I pretty much have got the right perfect scenario here. Some people even wrap the cutting all the way down to the bottom. You can do that too. Totally up to you. Um, so that kind of, there we go. That kind of talks about the soil moisture. And I would argue for this particular bin here at least is that we should probably check maybe one to two to three pots, see where the soil moisture is at. They're all gonna be slightly different, but they're all gonna be relatively the same and then we'll just water this entire bin at the same time. And I would argue maybe about five to seven days from now, based on the humidity in here of 30%, we probably will have to water this bin in roughly about a week. And maybe it's even gonna be as early as four days. So we really have to keep an eye on this and make sure that the moisture is right. Because if it's not, we're gonna really impede the growth and the success of these cuttings. Now. I have another bin down here, which has had a, you know, marginal success. This guy here has just got a bunch of weeds in it. We haven't rooted anything in here, but this bin, <clears throat> we essentially rooted this one first. And I haven't been on top of this as much as I would have liked. And it's for sure I know that the, the soil in this particular bin down here has started to dry out a little bit longer than I would have liked. So that rooting progress has been impeded a little bit. It's not like we can't recover at all. It's totally possible. In fact, it's very likely that a lot of those will recover. I'd rather have things a little bit drier than, than wet, but we certainly, if we had, let's say, kept the moisture as solid as it has been in these bins, these three bins up here, we would have had a lot more success and things would look a lot better, a lot greener as they do up here. So the next little piece of this, is gonna be the lights. And I've talked a lot about the lights in the past, um, talked about where I get them. I actually just bought some recently because we're going to essentially be, uh, you know, adding more lights to this particular closet once again, because this one here is only one, one light. And essentially, if you don't have enough light, a lot of things can get a little bit lanky. And there's actually, a a tree back here that is approaching that level of lankiness. I don't really particularly like that. It is okay. It's not the worst thing in the world, but you can tell that that cutting back there is just not getting a whole lot of light. We don't have two lights set up. Also the distance between the plants and the lights needs to be perfect, right? Essentially with fluorescent lights, we need to get them about two inches away from the leaves. Even maybe an inch would be better. Um, I have them on for about 16 hours a day on a timer. Highly recommend you guys do that because that's extremely important. See that timer down there? They're all also plugged into a surge protector. This one here has 12 outlets and uh, I think that's just a huge recommendation. <laughs> Obviously, if you got a lot of lights in a small area, you need a lot of outlets, right? 
Um, so here's the actual light. It's just a shop light. And I believe this one, if you can actually believe it, I think I bought the wrong one. But this is essentially where I get them is at Lowe's. It's by Lithonia. Uh, they're like $17 a piece. They're four foot long. Um, they don't cover a whole lot, right? The nice thing about this one is it has a nice brim on it, which actually extends the light a little bit wider, whereas these guys don't. Um, I would recommend one light um, per about eight inches. So one light really covers really only about, really, honestly, it's about six to eight inches, um, probably on the lower side. So if you have this one light here, you know, it's not gonna do the job for one width of this bin the width of the bin is, is 16, right? Because there's each one of these pots is four inches wide. So essentially, you really need to add two. And, and the year, I think it was last year that I added two, it really went a long way. And you can get better lights than this, guys. You know, this is just the bare minimum I personally would use. Um, it's the cheapest, it's the most affordable, it's efficient. I mean, it's just like, Really, if you're just getting into this, you don't want to upgrade, you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on lights, because you can. This is probably the cheapest way. Again, they're like $17, $18 a, a piece, a shop light. And then you just have to get the bulbs. And the bulbs, I get them in a larger pack. And you can see down there, it's actually the cool white. They're T8 bulbs, 32 watts. Now, the color temperature is really important, and you can see Perhaps the color temperature there. I don't think so. But essentially the color temperature is really, really important. And we're trying to mimic the sun. I mean, that's really kind of the whole key here. Is nothing's really going to do that. But we're going to try to get as close as we can. And in all honesty, uh, the only way you're going to do that is trying to get bulbs on different ends of the spectrum of the color temperature. So, you know, you, they, the color temperature range is somewhere between, I don't know, about 2000 to 6000. So essentially you want one bulb in the fixture because there's two bulbs in each fixture. One is, let's say 2000, the other one is 6000, right? And that will get you other ends of the spectrum, opposite ends of the spectrum, or as close to those numbers as you can. Now, the alternative is just go right in the middle. And that's actually what I've done here, is just go right in the middle. Um, and I think there's somewhere around 4,100 is that cool white. See that cool white there that's on the, the box? I think that's 4,100 if I'm not mistaken. And that will essentially cover a broader spectrum of the colors that these plants need. Now, if you remember just in nature, guys, you know, it's really a good idea to have a lot of your annuals that flower very easily. Let's say things like brassicas you want to have them in that morning sun because that morning sun is going to help them grow. That color temperature in the morning helps things grow. The color temperature in the afternoon when the light is a bit warmer, right, has that warmer feel to it, it's going to actually promote flowering. So we don't want these things to flower. We don't need them to flower. We do want them to grow. So in all honesty, you might even be better off with the color temperature that's a bit brighter and it kind of replicates that morning sun. That's kind of like that light here that I'm showing you right now. And if you had a whole, like a light in your home that was a bit more homey and warmer, you know, that probably isn't necessarily something you'd want to go with. But at the end of the day, you know, if it serves that right color temperature, you'll be fine. Um, so I think that really covers the light fixtures, the bulbs themselves. Again, they're four foot long that covers the distance, uh, color, we covered the, the color temperature here. They're T8 bulbs, by the way. Make sure if you're gonna get a fixture, I think this one here, the reason why it's the, it's the wrong fixture is because this is a T12 and I have T8 bulbs. So clearly I got the wrong one. Oh wait, actually here, it says it right here, requires T8 bulbs. So yeah, we're good. This is the right fixture, again, $18. Got to get the right bulbs, the right color temperature. You get all this right, you're good. The last little thing I want to leave you guys with is you don't need the lights right off the bat. I rooted these guys in this closet with the lights on 100% of the time from the very first day to where they are at right now. And you can do that. And I did that, obviously. But the reasons I did it was not because they need lights so immediately soon. 
I did it because of the warmth. I want them to be warmer in this environment because we need to have the right temperature in here, right? It's 77. It ranges between 73 when the lights goes off and 81 when the lights are on. So essentially, we want to make sure that we have the right rooting temperature, right? The right soil temperature. If it's between 75 and 80, you're good. If it's lower than that, you may want to add something like lights to actually warm up your environment. Otherwise, you're not going to have success. So really, really key there. Now, we do want to add lights, however, let's say when these things start to bud out. And right, they've got leaves on them. Obviously, they need it at this point. But even just as early as, like there was one down here I saw, like this guy right here is essentially where I would argue even before this, you'd want to start putting out, uh, putting lights on it. You know, it's starting to form those little leaves, smaller leaves. But even before that, when the, when the bud starts to expand and starts to turn green, starts to break through that parafilm, you want to have the lights on at that point the lights are going to give it photosynthesis that it needs. Any green material on the cutting can photosynthesize. So even as something as small as the bud, and I think that will really help these cuttings go a long way um, for a lot of you guys, is just getting those lights on a bit sooner than maybe you might think. You can root them in the dark, you know? Uh, that's also another choice. The issue is, or the reason why you might do that is because the, the soil temperature needs to be about 75 to 80, right? However, if you have that with bottom heat, that's good. But let's say you don't have roots that are forming just yet, um, but you have top growth. And that's actually kind of what's going on here with the bin in the back, is that the soil was a bit dry, but also they haven't rooted out just yet. And the uh, the reason they haven't rooted out is because the soil is dry, right? But the tops have started to leaf out. That's not the worst thing in the world, but I would have rather have preferred them to root out first, then put out the leaves. The reason they put out the, um, the leaves so soon is because of these lights. The top heat, the heat on top is going to encourage the cuttings to leaf out. It's not the light, it's the heat. Forget about the light, everyone always thinks that. You really need to care about the heat, guys. The temperatures in this environment, the bottom heat, the top heat, if you get it right, they leaf out and they root at the same time. And that's essentially what normally happens here in this environment. But the fact that this bin back here, I didn't have time to water it, um, that's just the story, is that it just hasn't been uh, getting enough moisture to actually put out those roots that it needs to support those leaves. So it'll catch up. Those guys will be fine down there. Um, it's not the end of the world if that happens, guys, but those are all the tips here in part two. I hope this made some sense. There's a lot to it, but yeah, we'll see you guys for the next one. Check out that playlist and uh, hit that subscribe button for me, all right? Take care, guys. We'll see you for the next one.